Hello everybody, welcome to this week's Chew and Chat and happy St. Patrick's Day. That's right. And I'm Ron Rayfield. I'm Justine Dorn and today we have some 10 out of 10 200 year old dishes. I tried to find Irish dishes from the early 1800s. Everything you see here is from 1822 or from 1823 depending on when the cookbook was published. The cabbage, however, is just one of those things, it's one of those recipes that's been passed down for generation to generation, and no one knows who was the first to do it. It just goes back and back and back. So I just decided to make it because every Irish person probably makes their cabbage this way or knows someone who does. So, Ron, I've already tried this. Yes, it smells... It smells good, but it smells stinky in here. Cabbage. If you know how cabbage smells when you boil it, it uh, it's a yeah. little, little funky. But I will say I've already tried it, and this is a 10 out of 10 dish. 10 out of 10. This Ooh. is fantastic. I know I'm putting it up there, and your expectations are really high right now. <laughs> uh, let's see uh, if it stands up to that. Yes. <laughs> Give me a piece of meat, please. Okay, I will serve you up. I kind of want one of these, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, and we have... You're going to eat that first? These are really thin pancakes, almost like crepes. Right. But, but they're not. They're right. Irish pancakes from American Cookery, 1823. Yes. And the thing is, back then, pancakes were always very thin, like modern crepes, crepes oh. would be. Crepes, crepes. <laughs> crepes. <laughs> crepes. Man, look at this. This just looks delicious. Here you go. Oh, and I almost forgot. Oh, yeah. Hmm. The stinky bits. <laughs> I like cabbage. You guys like cabbage? Ron don't like cabbage. You don't like cabbage? Well... I like coleslaw, but that's it. I don't like sauerkraut, and I don't like cooked cabbage. Look at this plate! But I'll eat it, and I'll give you my review. Look at this gorgeous plate! That is pretty gorgeous, but so is the lady that's holding it. Wow, you're too nice. All Thank right. you. <laughs> Thank you. I believe it is my turn to say the blessing this week. Yes. Let me put the lid back on here so it and stays keep that, hot. Keep puppy hot. Okay. <clears throat> Ready? Yes. Here we go. Lord, thank you for this beautiful meal that this beautiful woman sitting next to me has made. Thank you for all the watchers that are watching us this week. And we hope everybody has a good rest of the week. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank all right, I'm going to dig in here. The times you call me beautiful. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That was like punches of. He had a potato. He had a little, he had a bit of potato. I told you you were going to like the potatoes before we started filming. Everybody knows the potato soaks up all the flavor that's going on inside mm. the cooking vessel. I like these. Oh, that's mm. really, mm. really good. <laughs> We've been cooking for two hours. I know, it's just falling off the bone. Look at this. He can't even pick it up because it's just falling it's just apart. Like it's shredded lamb. It's mutton. Oh, it's mutton. Yeah, Even it's better. mutton. But you could probably mm. use lamb. <laughs> use beef. This is really good. Good this job. Is good. Mm. Okay. I don't need to go any far to tell you that yes, this is a number tell me. 10. I told you, this is a 10 out of 10 receipt. And it wasn't hard to make. It was not. I really like this. I really like this. It's very good. But wait, you haven't tried the cabbage yet. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to try it. Try your cabbage. Okay, here we go. Mmm. You know, it's not so bad. That's awfully suspicious, Ron. Did you really eat that mm. cabbage? Yep. Ron, face me and eat that cabbage like a man. Mm. Look me in the eye when you eat that cabbage. You might like it. Okay, it's not that bad. <laughs> You're it's, so not that, it's not that bad. <laughs> I like it. Let me get a let me get a real bite here. <laughs> Only because you put butter in it. <laughs> <laughs> and bacon. <laughs> you would you would not make for a very good peasant. No. But at least you like potatoes, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. The Irish love potatoes. Oh yeah. They sure do. Now, here's the thing. Neither of us are Irish. Nope. Mm -mm. But I like their food. I am actually uh, half Scottish. Like, from my mom's side, I'm Assyrian, which is a Christian minority group from Syria. 
And then from my dad's side, we were all Scottish because I have a grandma who's obsessed with genealogy and she's traced back every single ancestor I've ever had. Grandma Nancy. Yeah, my grandma Nancy. From my dad's side up until it's like the 12th century. That's a long time ago. And then it go, once you go back that far, it's a Scottish king because of course everyone's related to some king or queen, right? Kiss the ring. Kiss the ring. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just an American mutt. Yeah. Well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll say what he is in a bit in real life. But anyway, so after the 18th century, my ancestors on my dad's side moved from Scotland to Germany. Hmm. And then from Germany, after some decades, they moved to America. And Ron is British. Unfortunately. Through and through, he's British. I mean, they came over in the 18th century, but... That meat is really good. Yes, it is. Unfortunately, great, 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 great granddaddy was a red coat. Uh -huh. And I was Scottish, so once upon a time we were, we didn't like each other. No. But hey, you know who else is from Britain? St. Patrick. Like as in St. Patrick's Day. He was not Irish. Did you know that? He's a real person? Yeah, he's a real person. So he was born about year 400 AD. That's a long time ago. 400 AD? The year 400? I can't even wrap my mind around how long ago that was. <laughs> hmm. And he was born in England, right? Yes. Okay. He was taken as a slave at age 16 by the Irish. And Irish at the time were pagans, they weren't Christians. So they took him back to Ireland where he spent a couple years as a slave. He was a slave shepherd. He, he shepherded sheep as a slave. Okay, so they forced him to be a shepherd. Yes. And then he eventually made his escape and came back to England and became a priest and then returned to Ireland later and then convinced everybody to change to Christianity. He built churches and they're a Christian uh, nation today. Interesting. Yes. So really St. Patrick's Day is a Christian holiday? Yes, it is. Which sounds really silly because <laughs> the name is St. Patrick's Day. But I've never associated it with Christianity ever as a kid. That's because in the New World here, we're mostly Protestant. Mm -hmm. at, at the time of people coming to the New World, there were a few Catholics, but the majority of them were Protestants. Protestants don't celebrate saints or other humanly men. They only pray to Jesus Christ. Okay. So it's more of a Catholic thing to do the religious version of St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. The rest of us, the, the Protestant type people, they were just celebrating the culture on that day. Because he was still a great man, but they didn't see him as a worship figure. Okay. So... When did they even start celebrating that in America? <clears throat> so the first recorded history of celebrating St. Patrick's Day that I could find in America was in Boston in 1737. So, Whoa. so the Irish soldiers that were serving for the crown at the time, and some immigrants, mm -hmm. they would parade... Uh, through the streets of the city mm. and you know, they would wear green and show their support now the color green comes from the uh, Irish rebellion that happened in 1641 green was their representative color. You know, everybody has a color the Continentals had blue mm. England had red red coats. Okay, so what? I would assume that the Irish back then had their uniforms might have been green or their flags were at least so that's where the color green comes from. I think of the beautiful grass-covered hills of Ireland when I think of green. It's ironic that those two go hand in hand. Yeah. Speaking of fields, the other um, neat thing I've found out is there are two theories on what the four-leaf clover has to do with um, St. Pat's Day. Hmm. So, yeah, that. Or I'm sorry, the three loaf. The three loaf. The, the. the clover. The clover. <laughs> so the first theory is it's the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So there's three petals so on it's shaped that. like a cross. They say that St. Patrick's mm -hmm. used that to make the connection with the Irish men that the Lord is everywhere. Mm. And the next one is, it comes from about year 1500, the English referred to the Irish as wild men and said that they even grazed on clover such as cattle. They were that wild. To make fun of them. To make fun of them. Yeah, the Irish definitely had a very bad rap throughout the 1800s. So it's up to you to whichever one you want to believe. Are you Irish? Do you eat clovers? Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> now both of us are wearing green so you can't pinch us. 
Right. Pinching actually started in the early 19th century in our time period that we're in 1820s. Really? That originated in America. If you didn't show uh, your support by wearing green, they'd pinch you. Hey, I'm wearing green from head to toe. It's a faded green. This is a green green. Okay, I, I guess. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, pinching people on St. Patrick's Day originated in North America, mm -hmm. in the U.S. That's right. Interesting. Now, I know up in Chicago, every year for St. Patrick's Day, they dye the river green. Mm -hmm. So Americans take this holiday very seriously, <laughs> maybe more seriously than they do in Ireland. I'm not really sure, but it wouldn't surprise me. Actually, the first parade that Ireland had on St. Patrick's Day didn't happen until uh, 1903. So that's... 150 years 150 after. year diff mm -hmm. Yeah, Americans love our, we love our festivals. Well, we a lot love of, them. There's a lot of Irish immigrants here. Yes, there are. And there's a lot of bystanders that like to drink beer and have a hee-haw good old time. Yes, so there are. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally been commercialized, which is fine. I will say, I love you, Ireland. I love this food. Mm -hmm. um, we could only afford one pound of one the mutton. Two. So we ran out of meat already, which is disappointing because it was fall off the bone tender meat. And don't, you don't want to eat the fat. Yeah, don't eat the big lobs of fat because at least, you know, in my opinion, lamb or mutton fat doesn't taste good. It doesn't. I had a bite of it a while ago. Mm -hmm. It tastes real gamey. Yeah, it tastes gamey. But the meat itself doesn't taste gamey. It's the, the fat. And that's, that goes with a lot of animals. Venison is the same too. People that tell me they hate venison, which is deer. Mm -hmm. It's usually because they're eating the fat, or whoever cleaned it didn't do it right. Like, I don't mean to be mean or nothing, but right. you're, you're supposed to remove the fat when you clean a deer. At least most of it, because it tastes bad. The silver part, too. Yes. Yeah, you have to clean it a certain way, or else it's going to have a gamey, weird flavor. But the meat itself is fantastic. Hmm. These potatoes. The potatoes are the best part of this dish. Lam it, the lamb is good, but the potatoes... It's, it's the same animal. Okay, one's so... One's this old and one's a baby. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, he's right. Lamb is a you. young sheep, and mutton refers to the meat from a full-grown sheep. The meat is great, but the potatoes are greater. Because they soaked up They soaked up all of the taste. Yes, they did. They're fantastic. I'm going to have me a pancake. <laughs> Now, who in the world eats pancakes with their supper? Okay, 18th century, 19th century, up until a certain point, I don't know, maybe the late Victorian period. But earlier than then, pancakes were considered a dessert and were not necessarily a breakfast food. They could have been eaten for breakfast by some people, but they were not a breakfast food. So you would have had pancakes for dessert, and that's why on this table we have pancakes. It's our dessert today. Very interesting. Yeah. I like these. These got eggs in them. They do have quite a lot of egg. As does every single pancake recipe that I found from this time period. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. They're they're really a. Uh, they're kind of spongy. Yeah. They have a bounce. Yeah, they're they're bouncy. <laughs> bouncy. Yeah, they got a bounce. They're good. Beautiful golden color. I like it. Yeah, they are really good. They'd be really good for a snack on the go. And there's sugar in these and nutmeg too. Yep, there's nutmeg. I taste it. I've made pancakes on my channel <laughs> before. They were not Irish pancakes. They look pretty much the same at the end of the day. I mean, there's only so many ways a pancake can look. <laughs> but they wow. had they had lemon um, rind in them, I think it was, the last <laughs> time I made them. So there's a whole lot of pancake receipts from this time period. Very popular dish. I'm going to give those a oh, yeah, rate it. <clears throat> 7 out of 10. Okay. Now keep in mind I'm slightly biased because I don't like cabbage. Unless it's coleslaw. I love coleslaw. But that, I will give it an honest 7. Okay. That's just, not just, bad. Just because I don't like cabbage. But if, if I liked cabbage, I'd probably give it like an 8.5 or something. Okay. Not bad at all. <laughs> Ten, seven, seven and a half. We'll go seven and a half and what I say? Eight? You said seven for that. Okay, well this is eight. Oh, okay. Yeah, I changed, He's raised I changed it. it. Sorry. Hmm. There are three things it's hard to, to do. Seven and a half, ten, eight. Yep. That's my final answer and I'm sticking to it. Yep. Now, I agree <clears> with you. 
Seven and a half, ten, and eight. I actually agree with you 100% this time. <laughs> awesome. But, and the reason for that, an eight instead of a ten for that one, is because I make really good buttermilk pancakes, modern recipe, and so I'm very biased about what a good <laughs> pancake tastes like. But if you lived 200 years ago, there's absolutely nothing wrong with those pancakes. No. I mean, they're perfectly fine pancakes. They're just not, oh my, my life has changed forever pancakes. No, they're just good. They're, <laughs> what makes them really good is there's butter in the recipe. And the mixture. It's likes, in the mixture. So like you, you don't need syrup. I know some of you are thinking, oh my god, I can't eat a pancake without syrup. But these are moist, it's in it. Yeah, they're not dry. Yeah, they're not like dry. Like a lot of modern pancakes Now, are. modern pancake, I could not eat it without, Right. you know, some kind of moisture. I, <laughs> but. I swear, sometimes modern food is just so dry and bland <laughs> that we have to douse it in sauce to cover that up. <laughs> I mean, they might be good with some maple syrup on them, but yeah. they're good the way they are. Yeah, let me have I some. Like yeah, have another one. Not my head another one. Okay. So, Ron, while you eat your pancake, what happened today in history? This week in history, mm -hmm. it is President Madison's birthday and President Andrew Jackson's birthday. Hmm. But I do have some notes here on an important thing that happened to all of us this week. Daylight savings time. Ugh. Everybody hates it or everybody loves it. The news lied to me. I remember last year, I swear it said on the news that they, were, they voted to get rid of it. And I was so excited, I was telling everybody about it. And now look, now look where we're at. Yeah, it's It mid. didn't happen, I'm so four, confused. Four days later and you're waking up and it's dark and you're going to bed mm -hmm. when it's daylight. I'm so confused. <laughs> well, so do you know who had the first idea for today's second sign? It was Benjamin Franklin. Yes. <laughs> I didn't expect you to answer that so fast. Yeah, well, the thing is, he kind of knows everything <laughs> and did everything, so I just knew it had to be him. This is true. <clears throat> so, mm -hmm. when Benjamin Franklin suggested Daylight Savings Time, it was in 1784 in a satire letter that he wrote to the editor of the Journal of Paris when he was over in Paris. That's where it should have stayed, a satire letter. It should have stayed like that. His argument for... <laughs> Come on. It's not so bad. Oh, it's terrible. I don't mind it. It's bizarre and pointless and just bizarre. I don't know. I don't like it. Man, go cry all the way home. <laughs> all right. So his argument for or his reasoning for this is you can save money on candles. You can get more work done. So it's economical and conservative. Okay. So, you know, a longer daytime hours that you get more work done you don't have to sit at home and not get work done and, I don't. and with the time being so late by the time it gets dark mm -hmm. you go straight to bed you don't have to sit there in the dark at five o'clock and burn three candles until eight o'clock but no one took him seriously right no they didn't yeah he wasn't the one that got daylight savings no. time to happen that happened a long time later that happened probably in the mid 1800s victorian area Really? I thought it was later than that. Well, that's when people started doing it. Oh. European countries adopted daylight saving time hmm. method in the Victorian era. But the United States did not start doing it by law until 1918. And then they oh. carried out with that until World War II. After World War II, they did away with it for about 20 years. And then in 1966, the Uniform uh, Time Act was signed into law requiring all 50 states to participate in that. Except, wow. for, except for two states. Now, do y'all know who the two states were? What are the two states? I'll give you a hint. They're on the western side, and one's not even in the continental U.S. Okay, time's up. If you answered Arizona and Hawaii, you are correct. The two <laughs> states that don't have daylight savings time are Arizona and Hawaii. And why is that, Ron? All right, so, like I said, the Uniform Time Act was passed in 1966. The following year, in 1967, Hawaii made their argument that they're so close to the equator that it does not matter what time of year it is the sun rises at the same um time and goes down at the same time you have you have like 12 hours of each you know it's it's okay. it, never, it never changes okay yep that makes sense and then the following year in 1968 arizona makes their argument to get away from it because of the heat the longer daytime hours means more people working outside right well in arizona it's a desert and it's Very super hot. duper hot so they don't want to participate in that. 
So okay, those, okay. So those are the two <laughs> states that do not participate in daylight saving time today. Okay. You know, I heard this, and I'm not sure if it's true, but I heard that in the early 20th century, when they finally enacted this in the U.S., that the idea came from a guy who wanted more daylight out so he could play golf for longer. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Is no. that true? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't come across that, but you guys let us know. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't think I got any more facts for y'all. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> there really wasn't too much that happened this week. <clears throat> for some reason, these cold months, there ain't a whole lot that happens. You know, during the summertime, a lot of stuff happens, but during the uh, yeah. wintertime, a lot doesn't really happen. Okay, us. guys. Well, we are officially full, and now that we're full, that means it's time for us to leave. So thank you all for watching us so much. Spring is right around the corner. I'm super excited about it, even though spring always betrays me every year. And it's actually always colder and wetter every year than I remember it was. But at least we're heading in the right direction. So I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Do make this very simple, very easy. Andy's. Oh yeah, and the pancakes are great. Everything is great that's on this table. We love you, Ireland. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Could not time that any I know. better. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, we timed that. What was going on out there? <laughs>